Hey, hello, dear friends, dear colleagues. My belly is very sweet. Yeah, my belly is very sweet to present this lesson. Belly sweet means I am delighted to present this lesson on educational indicators and their uses for academic planning. You know, when I say academic planning, uh, it's a subset of educational planning. It's a, it's a, a set of three interesting, yeah, interesting, interesting lessons. And we're glad to bring you uh, the first one. Part one of the series on educational indicators for academic planning. Oh yeah, let's, let me put on my cap as we progress into uh, the lesson. Okay. So let's go. Yeah, okay, welcome to class. And we're looking at educational indicators and their uses for academic planning, as I said in the introduction. And this computations made is, and this part one, as I said, we're looking at five indicators. And Peter Okebukola, and today, February 7, 2022, Yes, we just finished uh, a very wonderful session on relevance of monitoring and evaluation in the university administration by Adeline Adi and S. Pwaku, chaired by our one and only Professor S.G. Uh, Professor, uh, Professor Michael Fagorode. And uh, this lesson, what are we going to be doing? We're going to be doing four things, four things. We're going to be defining the indicators. I want to be specifically defining these five indicators. We're going to compute them and more importantly, state the uses of these indicators for educational planning. You may want to ask me of what use is this lesson? What was the use? I tell you, the knowledge that you gain from me of the indicators will be helpful in planning within your context uh, of your job as a director of academic planning or within that directorate as a vice chancellor, as staff of National Quality Assurance Agency, like in NUC, staff of NUC, this is going to help this knowledge of indicators. GTEC in Ghana, Burundi, SHE, Zimbabwe, SHE, and the rest. Hmm. This one is very important. You see, you are, you are slaving, you are sacrificing your time, you are busy people, but you are attending this course. Yeah, you will see very soon that you'll be the first choice for, for consultancies for national and international consultancies on educational planning, including educational management information system, because of your knowledge and your skills in this course. Hey, do you permit me to, well, sub, uh, to tell you a little story? Because of uh, my little knowledge, I don't know much, though, my little knowledge of these things. In 1992, till 1997, I was appointed by UNICEF, UNICEF in New York, to be the consultant data analyst for UNICEF Nigeria. I did that for that number of years. And then by 1998 to 2002, I was appointed by UNESCO, UNESCO to be their consultant data analyst. Of course, I uh, also was consultant, consultant data analyst for, <laughs> for the Federal Ministry of Education on the educational sector analysis and all that. And I was appointed, yes, I was appointed director planning, research and statistics of the Federal Ministry of Education in 2000 May. Uh, you wonder that was not for my CV. Yes, not for 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 you know because the appointment was botched, and then I was uh, then moved to be as a secretary, National Universities Commission. That's a story for another day. So it's going to give you an edge over your colleagues, you know, when they are discussing key educa key education, high education indicators. They are talking about gross enrollment ratio, net enrollment ratio, and all the efficiency. The others will be looking like uh, uh, something else, but you will come out. And it gives you that edge. Now, the five indicators we'll be looking at uh, this lesson, you know, we said lesson one will be this. And then, okay, what's an indicator? On a lighter note, <laughs> an indicator is something that indicates. But on a more serious note, the indicator is a statistical value. Hey, don't fret, oh, don't be, <laughs> don't run away with oh, statistics, nothing. You find that this the, the, this lesson and the next one, the next one, the three that we're going to have in this in this series, very very simple. St a statistical value that provides an indication of the indication indicator of the conditions <laughs> condition presence or absence or direction of the phenomenon. So they are usually quantitative rather than qualitative. And the key words you find in the indicators are percentage of if you look at the statistical digest of Baba Salu uh, of uh, Baba Baba Mirashid. Under, I mean, Basali, under Baba Mirashi, uh, you find the 
the various percentage of this, ratio of this, proportion of this, rate of this. So it's as simple as that. And indicators, there are many of them, many in education, over 2,000. They are in the input area, process area, output area, and outcome area. Uh, this uh, model that we came up with in 2007 has all of these variables in these clusters. So let's take the learners. The learner variable can have 15 or 50 or whatever indicators, like percentage of, this, the, of uh, students with disabilities, percentage of female and all that, same for, thing for teachers. So you have many of these variables. So <laughs> there's no problem with calculation because some, I recall my friend, uh, our former dean of education, OOU, Professor Michael Badamose, OOU is Solar Bison of Banjo University, by the way. He's a great educational manager. You saw him during the other session. Uh, the, uh, he, he said, oh, there are a lot of calculations in these things. And he said, but the calculations are good. They are, well, good. What do I, what do I mean by good now? <laughs> good. They are easy. They are not as uh, highfalutin or stressful as that. So you have all you need, to, all you are doing in this, in this, in, in the indicator thing, is you are just adding, you are dividing, you are multiplying. Um, mostly you are doing this percentages, percentages. These are my our lasso staff school students. They are able to do this thing. So you big big men in this course, that should be very easy. Percentage. This one over this times a hundred. That's all you'll be doing, and you'll find that that is so. Except when you have absolute numbers, when you are doing counts. So don't be afraid. It's going to be as easy as I said though. Hot knife through butter. But Professor Miranda, all I they said, I said test number one, weekly test number one, I'll like through butter, but that one will be like that. Where do you find indicators? Anywhere. You can you can concoct some yourself. But the desk is for statistics, you'll find uh, on their sites, you have uh, the major educational indicators, adult literacy or literacy net intake rate, and all of these things that you can see on the screen. Hmm. We are moving. Major educational indicators continue. So let's begin with uh, gross enrollment rates. Might I pronounce this word? I say gross, not gross, not gross like cross. No, no, no. I call it gross. How do I know? I will show you how I know that it is gross, but you can call it anything. Nobody is going to arrest you. There's no policeman for arresting people. But the correct pronunciation, my dear participants, is gross. So let us check it out. Yeah, so what I normally do is to ask uh, Mr. Google pronunciation of gross. So let's see. Uh, this is it. You can see, see, it sounds like gross, not gross. So let's actually listen. Gross. Gross. You can see gross. Now, this British pronunciation, let's look at American pronunciation. Yes, now listen very carefully, my dear participants. Gross. 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 Yeah, so we're going to take it as gross. Yeah, so <laughs> gross enrollment rate, G-E-R. Sometimes you call it gross, you make it gross enrollment ratio. So what is it? Let me tell you in simple terms what gross enrollment ratio means. Now, if 1,000 youth in my village, my, my village, Elegbada village, uh, are between ages 16 and 30 years. This is actually my village, yes. Um, this was taken about three years plus, three and a half years ago, this 8th December 2018. So if we had, like, just in simple terms, if we had 1,000 youths in my village who are between 16 and 30 years of age, why did I put 16 and 30 years? Because this like the official age, 30 years NYSC. Uh -huh. After 30 years, you can be mobilized. So you're taking 16 and 30 years as the official age. And if 150 of the youth in my village are enrolled in universities in Nigeria and anywhere else, regardless of their ages, some can be under 16, some can be 35, 40, 50, 60, whatever. So the gross, gross enrollment rate or ratio is this number that I enrolled divide by this number that should be enrolled times 100, as simple as that. 150 enrolled over 1,000, uh, the potential people, times 100. So the gross enrollment rate or ratio of my village, of course, you hardly calculate for village. 
you calculate for nation or for region and all of that. But just to put it in simple terms, is 15. So let's look at the definition. Definition of gross enrollment ratio is total enrollment in a specific level of education, regardless of age, expressed as a percentage of the total of the eligible official school age population corresponding to the same level of education in a given school year. And you calculate it by dividing the number of students enrolled, that's the 150 that we saw, in a given level of education, that's university, regardless of age, by the population of the age group, which officially corresponds to the given level of education. I multiply the result by 100. So I told you, very simple. This over this times 100. That's all we'll be seeing for all of the, uh, for all the indicators we'll be looking at. Now, let's do a simple calculation for uh, GR for university education in Nigeria. The number enrolled in all 201 Nigerian universities, regardless of age, in 2020 to 20, 2021. Uh, yes, 2021, yes. is 2162018. How do I know this? I'm going to show you in a minute. This is the state of university education in Nigeria 2020. We're actually doing the GR for 2020. Yeah, so this is from uh, our girl, Professor Salu, but this is under the supreme command of Babami Rashid, Professor Abubakar Adamo Rashid. So he's telling us that uh, percentage total enrollment. So this is total enrollment for the Nigerian University System 2020, 216, uh, 2162081. Yeah, uh, uh, 2162, actually 018, that's the number, regardless of age, because there are some other age children there. Number of Nigerians in the age group 16 to 30, this uh, will obtain uh, for projected though for 2020, 22 million, and the rest you can see here. So the gross enrollment, gross enrollment rate or ratio is this one divided by this one times 100. This you can see divided by 22 million times 100, that gives us the GR. 9.78. How do you interpret it? Well, when the GR is high, naturally, you indicate a high degree of participation. Many more, many more students are there, uh, whether belonging to the age group or not. A GR value approaching or exceeding 100, because at the primary level, you get you above 100. Uh, it indicates that where old people, young people are there. Then how do you use it, use it as an academic planner in higher education? You have to use it to show the general level of participation in a higher in higher education, either in, in a university education. I think this age will go for you to plan investment that will accommodate increased access in higher education to guide the enactment of a realistic realistic policy on higher education initial participation rate. I don't think we have one in Nigeria, but most countries have to say, look, our initial education participation rate should be like in the UK should be 50 percent that is 50 percent of those who are eligible should be in higher education uh, for south africa it was set about 10 years ago to be 20 percent different countries set their policies uh, i'm not too sure whether we have one in nigeria but uh, this training that you have can help you to project to advise the enactment of such a policy that when compared with any r you're going to get there in, in, in a minute so uh, let me leave that out it can also be used as a complementary indicator to net enrollment rate by indicating the extent of overaged enrollment to enable planners, to enable you as academic planners, make international comparisons of access to higher education. Now, let's look at global comparisons of uh, GER. Let's fall back on World Bank data and uh, what do you have? School enrollment tertiary percentage gross enrollment. So uh, all countries and economies, most recent year, you can see even Afghanistan has <laughs> the most recent, has 2020 data. The most recent value, 11. Albania, 58% of people in Albania have, you know, are, are in higher education. Those students should be there. Uh, Algeria, 52. Uh, you can see all of this. Let, let, let's get to uh, Nigeria. Maybe I take Ghana. Because Ghanaians are uh, in this group, Ghana, where are you, G? Yes, Ghana for 2020, 19, 19, GR of 19. They have data up to 1919. Uh, Nigeria, where are we? Nigeria is here, 
2011. So you can see data, big issue for us in Nigeria. But I'm sure that you academic planners, based on this training, you'll be able to help our country out. This is the latest that we have, 2011, hey, uh, 10%. Yeah, uh, Zimbabwe is here. Let's see what we have in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, uh, yes, in 2017, 9%. So that's how you make international comparison. And you as a academic planner, can I go up there to say that the global GR is 40? The African, let's see, South Africa, south of the Sahara, where are we? Uh, Middle East, North Africa, other states, so, South Sahara, Africa, we have nine, you can see. So you use this as basis for comparison. Oh, have you enjoyed it so far? All right. So let's go on a short break. When we return, we get to the next one. That's the net enrollment ratio see you then welcome back from this short break let's get on to the net enrollment rate that's the brother if you like the sister of gross enrollment rate what's net enrollment rate well it's defined as enrollment of the official age group for a given level of education expressed as a percentage of the corresponding population. So what you do, how do we, how do we calculate it? We divide the number of students enrolled who are the official age group for a given level of education by the population of the same age group and multiply the result by 100. As I said, this whole indicator business is just percent, this over this times 100. In some cases, well, you just say this over this, just dividing and multiplying. So let's look at the net enrollment ratio calculation for Nigerian universities. Now, the number enrolled in all the 201 Nigerian universities, age 16 and above, is this. How do I know? I just guessed because I don't know. You know, we say the age group, that's 16 and above. That is for university education. Now, some are less than 16. You know, they are very bright, smart people, and their parents are also bright. Who will, who will get a, a certificate of uh, age 15 or 16 for them. So you, we, I, what I did was to take off, I just guessed, how many will be off this range, under age, that's under 16. So we have it as this number. So that's the difference between NER and GER. GER does not care. Okay, it takes on everybody. Uh, so number of Nigerians in the age group takes up any, every, everybody who's enrolled. So the number of Nigerians in the age group 6 to 30 is this. So this one is constant. So the NER is this, divide by this to give 8.28. You can see in almost all cases, in all cases, NER is lower than the GR because of what? Because you are shaving off all those who are under age or over age. So how do you interpret this? You interpret a high NER, of course, will show that a, that uh, will show a high degree of coverage for that official group. The theoretical maximum is a hundred percent. You can't get more than hundred percent, but you can get more than hundred percent in GER because in GER you are taking under age, you are taking over age and pulling everybody together, especially for the lower level. Uh, of education for the university level tertiary education level uh, you don't take over age because 80 year old you can come and do <laughs> like me you can come and do am i 80 years i'm not <laughs> you can come do uh, but learn how to learn lifelong learning so we're all there we're all there now when nr is compared with gr the difference between the two as i mentioned highlights the incidence of under eight especially for university or higher level, I mean, higher education, and over age enrollment for primary and secondary. Now, how do we use it as academic planners, for instance, for higher education? Just about the same as GER, to show the general level of participation in a higher, or educa in higher education, uh, university education in this case, to plan investment that will accommodate increased access in our education to guide the enactment of the reali of a real realistic policy on our education and the rest that you can see on the screen that also apply to GR. Hmm. Let's move on to Gender Parity Index, GPI. GPI, uh, dear participants, is defined as the ratio of male to female 
female to male. We're taking female first. No, ladies first too. Female to male values. This hasn't got, we are not doing any percentage here. How do you calculate it? Just divide the male value, excuse me, female value. Why am I saying female all the time? Oh, because I'm a man. Okay, fine. Female, ladies first. Uh, uh, of a given indicator by that of the male. So you can disagree with it by level of education, type of institution, geographical location, and all of that. How do you interpret it? A GPI equal to one in case parity. That means it's just one. If you divide the male number by the female number, if it is one, that makes sense now. It means that the disparity is the same thing. If it's one, the case there is no difference between male and female in terms of number, there's parity. Uh, parity, <laughs> don't let me go there. Parity, our uh, staff unions in Nigeria are talking about parity. So that one is a different matter entirely. <laughs> in general, if I that's less than one, in the case disparity in favor of the boys, that is, you have lower number up, low, uh, higher number down. The higher number, of course, is that of the, of the boys. So in the case of parity in favor of the girls or women. So now let's do a little calculation relating to GPI for Nigeria University System 2019. And I'm going to take actual figures from, from where? From the digest of statistics that has been so wonderfully produced by Professor Biodun Salu, Director of Academic Planning, and his team under the auspices of the UC Strategy Advisory Committee and, uh, of course, our, our guy, Pata Pata, Baba Rashid himself, a great man. I, I love that man. He's a superman. He's a great man. So let's look at this. Let's look at these values and how I got them. So these are 2019 values, full time, undergraduate enrollment by university, by level of gender, order by highest number. Now, if you look at this, the total male, you can actually do it for your institution. Look at gender parity for your institution. This is male for National Open University of Nigeria, the uh, powerhouse of this uh, training program. And this is a female. So if you put this one, excuse me, if you put this value over this value, you can see you are going to get less than one, but it's not too bad. So that's how it is. Now let's take the total for the Nigerian University system. A great system, I tell you. So this is, you can see, female and male total. So this is the thing. We're taking 805,000 women, brilliant women and girls, and then one oh. 1048 uh, 1, <laughs> uh, 1, 48 and, and, and all of that so let's look at the uh, values let's plug in these values and get the gender parity index 2019 for the nigerian university system yeah so what do we have the female the male gpi to this one divided by this one and it's giving us 0 0.77. What does it mean? It means that the men are more in number. So you know we didn't do percentage. If we did percentage, it would be like some something percent for in favor of the uh, favor of the uh, percent for female. Now, uses by academic planners, that's our group, your group, uses to measure progress towards gender parity in education, in, in education participation. And the learning opportunities that are made available to women relative to those of men. And you use it to measure level of women's empowerment in society. For the Nigeria University system, it's not too bad. But you're going to see some comparisons and it's going to be quite interesting for you. So, uh, oh, before we go on to the coefficient of efficiency, let, let, let me take you to global comparisons of G. Uh, uh, the gender parity index, GPI. Yeah, so this school enrollment tertiary gross gender parity index, GPI. That's the one we're looking at. And this World Bank data, and it's uh, one of the most reliable. And actually, it's derived from the UNESCO Institute for Statistics, September 2021, as recent as that. So for all the countries, let's look at, uh, let's take on the countries. Uh, let's take Mr. Burundi, that's here, Burundi, you can 0 0.61, 0 0.61, that's the GPI for Burundi. Let's look at some others that you can see up here. Afghanistan, 0 0.39, that's understandable. Albania, 1.37, Algeria, 1.41, um, American Samoa, and, and the rest of them. So, uh, taking Burundi, let's take Ghana, 
Ghana, where are you? Quickly. Ghana is here. 0 0.9. 0 0.90. Oh, almost approaching, you know, that, that uh, uh, parity. Let's get on to Nigeria, a great country, Nigeria. Where do we have? 0 0.69. You know, it's not so far from, that's the, as a 2011, I told you, to Nigeria. 2011, 10 years plus ago, 11 years ago. That's not too good. 0 0.69. But you can see what I calculated here for the universities alone, not just not tertiary. Tertiary will include the college of education, the polytechnics, but you can see we're not too bad in terms of the university, 0.77. Yeah, last one, let's take uh, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, uh, where, where do we have? Uh, Z, Zimbabwe, because Zimbabwe is here, great country, 0 0.84. So that is the uh, that's gender parity index for you. So back to number four or five, we're almost there. It's a long lesson, but I uh, hope you are enjoying it. Uh, and that we're not scared now about the competition. It's very easy. Just this divide by that. That's all. So coefficient of efficiency, I really like this, like the others do. Uh, this is the definition. Big, big grammar here. <laughs> the ideal optimal number of people's year required for this. Find time to read this. But what it means in simple terms is for you to take, okay, let me go back here. You can be reading as I, as, 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 as I proceed. Now, efficiency. You enroll 1,000 students in your university on the educational system in, at, at a particular year for a four-year degree program. And by the end of four years, 1,000 of them graduate. You, you get in 1,000, 1,000 graduate. I hope you have, been, you have been reading this one. Uh -huh. So, 1,000 graduate, meaning that the output over input that is simple, simple physics for this particular uh, uh, computation is output over input times 100. Output is 1,000 that you graduated. Input that came four years back, 1,000. Output over input that's 1,000 divided by 1,000 times 100 will give you what? 100%. That means you are 100% percent efficient. You took in the same number and you processed them in four years and all of them graduated. Let's look at uh, the calculation of uh, coefficient of efficiency for university. Uh, of, uh, for university. Okay, now there's some, some error there. Number enrolled in a cohort of students in a specific year of entry for a four-year degree program. That's the, the example I was given. Divide by the number who graduated in four years. So let's take uh, an example. Number that matriculated in 2016 in your university, 4,500. Number who graduated in 2020, four years. Now you are ex you are excluding all those transfer people and all that. You are just you are just uh, computing on the basis of those that you admitted and went through the four year program in your university. It's 4,200. So this is the output this is the input so efficiency is this input output over this times a hundred so that what do we have efficiency output divided by input times a hundred that's 93.3 percent efficient this is not bad this is what you get in most of the private uh, schools and some public institutions uh, federal and state universities in nigeria that have stable academic calendar and you don't have a situation where uh, you get a compulsory course that's holding up so many students. So that that, that makes uh, efficiency to be depressed. So that's how you calculate efficiency. I really love it because it's a measure, it's a good measure of how a university is progressing. Uh, so how do we use the academic planners to show the consequences of repetition and dropout on the efficiency of the educational system in producing graduates and to plan remedial measures if efficiency is low? Like in some cases, in some universities, efficiency of the postgraduate especially is superlatively low. You admit <laughs> uh, uh, 150 for a master's degree program, and at the end of uh, your 18 months or even two years, you get only uh, uh, 50 in the entire university graduating, even for PhD, very poor, very low efficiency. So to allow you to plan remedial measures, to say postgraduate school, now you wake up. Now, it will also help, help you to identify, you use it to identify and remove cogs in the wheel of progress of the system in attaining high level of efficiency. 
these are some of the uses there could be more now we're going on to the last of them that's public expenditure on higher education as percentage of total government expenditure mm, what does that mean is defined as this total public expenditure on education current and capital expressed as a percentage of total government expenditure in a given financial year how do you calculate it that one is very easy it's easiest you just pull together all the monies expended for the entire country and then pull together the money that's expended on education if you want that of education total or university education or higher education and just divide and multiply by 100 as I, as, as I mentioned to you this calculation is super easy let me take this example and the figures are hypothetical let's take the total expenditure for all sectors in the in the nigeria economy uh, uh medical uh, me, uh, health uh, agriculture roads infrastructure education all of them all the sectors look i love this one expenditure i don't like budget budget i tell you is a big difference from expenditure you can budget whatever but the money that comes out finally if the, usually they expect the the budget is not implemented 100 100%. So I like expenditure. So you you can like anyone you like, but me that's what I say I like. Yeah. So to the expenditure for all sectors, for the federal for for, for the federal, let's assume it is one trillion, one point one two billion. For the states and FCT, let's assume it's this, and I will tell you. The, the the error that many people make and i want you not to fall into that trap and that trap is they will say uh, nigerian government uh, the expenditure on this thing is uh, only they only divide this by this but that is not nigeria you have to go to every state get how, how much they have expended on lagos state university on other universities there quarter state university and other people other this and there all the universities in the states and the FCT, FCT, I don't, FCT hasn't, it's not only one. So all this, you have to add up all the money for the year. This is not, this is really, I mean, it's mischievous. This is really not present in many of the calculations that people do. But you have to factor this in. It's a public expenditure, public expenditure on higher education, in this case, university education, as percentage of total government expenditure. So it's not federal government now. Of course, you can partition this into federal government, but we're looking at total public expenditure. So let's assume that for the federal, the, for all the sectors, these, these, these are the amounts, totaling 3490 for everything. But the total expenditure on university education by the federal government, expenditure, the money they release to Ibadan, to, if, uh, to all of this, ABU, Kano, BUK, Assume it is 56 billion. For the states, you add them up one by one. And this is where you hardly can get the data. The, 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 the data are very uh, stiff, you know, to obtain for all the states. Let's assume it's 250. For all the public agencies, that fund, uh, and the rest, 23. So total is this. So for this indicator, my dear participants, it is taking this. What is spent on this one on education in this case, in this case university education by the total expenditure for everywhere and what you have here is this by this to give 9.42 percent like i said this is theoretical but that's just to guide you how do you use it as academic planners you let you assess government's policy emphasis on education in this case university education relative to the perceived value of other public investments so you say, uh, uh, look at the budget for this. Like I said, I don't like budget. I like expenditure. Of course, the budget will give a, 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 an insight into uh, how much is expended. But the expenditure is the, the way to go. So you say, okay, they have spent this for agriculture, for medicine, uh, for health, for security, uh, for social, other social services and all that. But for education, it is this. So that will let you as a government planner, let government, you know, assess the policy. As a base for advice to government on how to properly fund your higher education. Now, let me pause here to tell you that there is nothing, and I want you, or you know, we gave it as a question that uh, UNESCO has uh, recommended 26%. It's all lies, it's a myth. There's nothing like that. I'll come to it when 
will take in all unit cost. So, uh, but you're able to advise government, you know, they have to properly fund uh, higher education, in this case, university no education. It also reflects, uh, it reflects the commitment of government to invest in human capital development. Uh, before I come to the next slide, let me show you uh, global comparisons. This is also from the World Bank, which is a very creditable source and uh, current education expenditure, tertiary, percentage of total expenditure in tertiary public institutions. So Afghanistan, 68%, 2015, Albania, 89. Let's keep going. Let's look at Burundi. Burundi, where are you? Burundi, 2013. You know, you can see it's far back, 97.2%. Ghana, Ghana, Ghana. Yeah, so let's get into Ghana. Ghana is here, 77.3% expenditure in 2014. Let's look at our great country, Nigeria. Nigeria, nothing. So you can see, everything is hidden there. Oh, it's just not good enough. But Nigeria, nothing. So that takes me to uh, my next slide. Is that secrecy, secrecy <laughs> on dependability, ah, big grammar there, <laughs> of education and data in Nigeria. It's a major challenge to presenting Nigeria accurately to the world. If you now look at statistical data, statistical digest from all countries of the world, Nigeria will be getting 2006 data, 2011 data in 2022. Is that good? Not so good. And the same applies for many African countries. So Africa. We've got to wake up and we're depending on you you academic planners you know to break this shackle of uh, of whatever it is so in this lesson what have we learned we've learned how to calculate and use the following academic planning and uh next lesson we're going to take on another five so that brings us to the end of it uh thank you very much mm -hmm.